What's up guys, my name is Andy. You know, it wasn't too long ago that I had installed an electric fan setup on my 66 Mustang to go with my new engine build, my new larger radiator, and I wired it in a way that I used a relay to trigger the power that the fans would need. And the ground for that relay is what I attached to this temperature sensor in the thermostat housing on my engine. And that's a very, very common way to do it. That's how most of them are done when you do these kind of retro kits on these kind of cars. This kind of doesn't really matter if you've got a Mustang or something else. This would be something that would work on, on a lot of these cars that you, you know that we're working on. And again, it's really common to use that temperature sensor as the ground because when that when that temperature reaches you know whatever set point that that particular device is that you bought, I believe mine is 185 degrees. When it sees 185 degrees in the coolant, it closes the circuit, which closes which connects the ground for the relay, which opens the relay, and my fans get electricity and they turn on. Great, that's how we want it to do. However, what I don't have is a backup plan. Now this, because like any other electrical component, these things can fail. And what happens when that, when that temperature sensor fails? Well, it won't ground, which means it won't turn my fans on, which means my engine could overheat. So I want an override system, a way to bypass that temperature sensor, whether it's because the sensor has failed or I just want the fans on for whatever the reason is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install just a switch on my dash that allows me to override this setup and turn the fans on now I'm gonna do this so that the fans can only come on when the car is on. I'm not gonna set it up so that the fans can come on when the car's off. You guys may wanna do that. That's not something I'm interested in right now. I just want it so that when the car is on, I can control when the fans come on and off if I don't wanna rely on that switch. Real quick, let's take a look at the parts that we're gonna install. So to make this work, we're going to use a switch like this. And I don't recall the name if it's a double throw, triple, I don't, I, I don't know the name of that switch, I'm sorry. Uh, but what I want it to be is so it's either on, off in the middle, and then on on the bottom. Just like this, this tag that's on here. And I'm not going to reuse this piece on here, I've got something else. But this is the kind that I want so that I'm going to have it, for example, in this up position will be the auto or where the fan is dependent on the, that switch in the thermostat housing. But if I switch it down to there, then it's on and it's overriding that switch and then the fan's on when I tell it to be on. And then this middle part where it's that middle side, that's off and I, I won't ever use that. I'm not really worried about that. So I'm just gonna be doing this one or this one. Uh, now there's a, probably another switch you can get, but I wanna make sure it has three poles where it's either this way or this way, nothing in the middle. Um, but <laughs> this is what I found. And again, this is a cheap switch. This is a, a higher amperage switch than probably what you need because we're just, working with the ground of the relay, low amperage system, low, low, it's not something we're gonna need a heavy duty switch for. I just want something that's gonna do the job and, and it's the same style of switch as I have in my car, which I'll show you here in a minute. So what you don't wanna do also is something like this that I had uh, mistakenly ordered. Uh, this is a momentary switch where the middle is on or whatever, but it, see how it doesn't, doesn't stay? I did, I, I ordered this originally and I must have not have been paying attention. This is not what you want. I mean, I, you might, but this is not what I want for my setup. I don't want these momentary setups. I want it to be, you know, stays on or that one or whatever. That's what I'm looking for, not this one. So this is garbage, but I wanted to point this out. So just in case you guys are ordering switches, make sure that you don't get something that's a momentary if you're trying to recreate what we've got here, so. And the last part I've got here are these, these switch, you know, uh, placards or covers or whatever. And I've got several of them here. And the reason why is the, the place that I got it from, uh, I believe it's called Carolina Laser. Uh, you can order one and then pay the shipping or order a bunch of them and the shipping's gonna be essentially the same. So I just got a bunch of different styles and types. Depending on how I wanna do things, down the road I might wanna do some fog lights or exhaust cut out or something. So I got a bunch, but I'm actually gonna use this one right here is actually the one I wanted to use. I just got a bunch of extras just in case. So when we got this guy in here, it's gonna be set up like so, so where it'll be auto, where it's, it's doing its thing when it's supposed to turn on, and then my override when I'm, when I'm wanting it to be on for when I want it to be on. So this is, this is the actual one I'm gonna use. I, I got another one where it's got the kind of the opposite flipped around, and I didn't think I wanted that for sure, but I got them just in case. Now I don't need all these for right now, I just need just the one, but again, because you can order a whole bunch of these for essentially the same shipping, so. I got all that done. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and uh, let's move into the car and I'll show you where I'm gonna install this. Now on, on your guys' car, you can install lots of different places. Uh, on my car, 
Uh, I've got a place where I want to put it at, and this is where it's more specific to my car than to your car, but finding a place to, to, to mount this is, is uh, probably the next step that you're going to want to do. So here in my car, I've got a switch already, and what <laughs> I didn't want the, the floor switch uh, for the high beams, low beams. I wanted some place to put my foot. I'm used to having that, so I just moved that to here, so I've got high beams and low beams. And, uh, you know, this is something that works for my setup. It may not be what you want, but what I was going to do is I was thinking about moving this over here next to the light switch so that I have a hole here for, for this guy, and then I could put the fan over right there. But what I don't want to do is I really don't want to drill holes in the dash, but I'm kind of too late now. I've already done it for this, and I was thinking maybe getting a piece of angled steel or, or aluminum or whatever, and I could just mount it underneath here, and I could put these switches in that angle piece. And then they would be down here, but I didn't want to have to reach way down here to, to do stuff. And so I just put it here. For this new one, I'm thinking about putting it below it. Now I know you can't really see it, particularly when you're sitting here in the car, but I don't need to see it because I know it's there. And once you know it's there, you know, it's wherever you, you know, you've kind of got it set to memory. Like I was saying, I could have something set here with the, the headlights. I just don't think that's going to look that great. But besides, this is really curved. And there's not a lot of room behind this part here, but there's plenty of room back here. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna put this guy down there and uh, then I'll have the two switches for the things I'm doing here. So let me get that uh, set up in my car here real quick. Before I put this in the car, maybe I should cover real quick on how we're going to wire this up and why you can do this on your car. It's not specific to my car. It'll work for yours. So if you've got your standard relay you know, in your car, much like you know the standard automotive relay like I've got here, which is a normally open setup here. And what I've got here is I've got all of the terminals numbered because these would be the same numbered terminals on your relay. And this, if you're going to set it up the same way, this is how you do it. So terminal number 30, this is where the power is coming in from the battery. And it's going to be sitting here on this, on this post and it's normally open. So it's not connecting. It's not, you know, it's not doing its thing. And when this energizes, when this solenoid energizes, it's going to close this terminal and the power is going to go through to the fans. And that's done by, we're going to send a 12 volt switch source. So something that's positive with 12 volts when the car is on to this coil inside the relay and the ground is what's closing the circuit and allowing the power to run through here. So in my case, the ground on the relay is the going to the temp sensor on my uh, thermostat housing. And so when it reaches that certain temperature, again, I think it's 185 degrees, this continues to, you know, go. it'll, it'll close the circuit here, which means it'll close the circuit for this coil, activate the coil, power goes to the, to the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interrupt this signal, the, the, the wire that's going out to the temperature sensor on the car. I'm going to interrupt it with this. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, if we look at this side here, this is the, and we'll just do it like that. There we go. So this is the, the switch, right? Coming in from here from the relay on terminal number 85, that wire that was going out to the, to the, temperature sensor on the engine is going to come into here on this terminal and then I'm going to actually I'm using this little cutout here on the bottom of the switch to kind of as my indicator of what's up and down in the car so it's counterintuitive I want up to be auto and down to be the override when I want it to control the fan well when it's up it's actually going to be using this terminal down here that's why I have this one set up as the, uh, the to the temp switch because when this is this way that's going to be closing this circuit you know when this switch is up when the switch is down when I'm overriding it it's going to be going through here and out this way and this is just going to go to ground so chassis ground any good chassis ground will be fine on this one again we're coming in from the relay here and this is just going to go right back out to the temp sensor so that wire that I'm going from here out to the straight out to the temp sensor is just coming in and I'm just interrupting it with this switch and that's why I need to have uh, this set up like that. So now that we know that, I can go ahead. I'm gonna, I've got a ground wire you know, all ready to go. So I'll just go ahead and put this guy on here. And then I can run that to a good ground underneath the dash. And then 
the uh, the wire that's going to be coming in from the relay is going to be coming in right here and then I've got to make another one of these for the wire coming out here going out to the engine bay. So now that we know that I can go ahead and throw this in the dash, get everything hooked up and throw this dash and we'll, we'll get this stuck on there. Actually real quick here, let me just show you how this works so we know that we've got the right terminals. What we can do is we can use one of these multimeters and we want to set it so that it'll beep with uh, when the circuit is short. There we go. See? So that's good, right? So that if we have this terminal that's going to be coming in from the switch and if the, that's that way, that means this one that's what we want, right? And then if we flip it the other way so again, just by looking at the switch, it's not intuitive. I, you know, in my head, I would think these two go together when the switch is up, but it's not that. It's it's the opposite. It's these two that are together when the switch is up, and then when the switch is down, it's these two. So that's and you know, just whatever switch you have, you can test that by 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 testing. You know, make sure you've got this uh, circuit closed like that. So real quick. All right. All right. So now we got this switch ready to go. I've already got the ground wire already connected up and in, up inside here behind the dash. And what I want to do is I just want to plug these on and just turn the key on and make sure that this works before I get it installed in here, you know, for permanent. So what I've got is this white wire is the wire that's coming from the relay. So we're going to put that on this middle terminal. And this orange wire is the one that's going out to the temperature sensor on the engine. So, and because I'm gonna, I remember I said I got this little bottom thing on here on the bottom of the screws, that's gonna tell me that this is standing up right this way. So if the switch is up, then that means it's an auto, and then if it's down, it's override. So I want it to up, so it shouldn't be, the fan should not be running. So let's put the key in, turn it to on. Okay, good. Now if we switch it down to override, it should turn the fans on. All right. Cool, that's what we wanted, perfect. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and install this in the dash and check up the wires and then we're good to go in here. All right guys, here's just a finished look. You know, I got my headlight high and low beam. Now my electric fan, auto and override. So we're good to go there. And again, you know, from, from back here, you, you know, you can't really know. I mean, it's better than I think than drilling a hole on this side over here and this is too curved and it's just too cluttered. and. Again, not having you know, holes not not having holes in the dash is probably better, but this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing, and it's on the side, it's subtle and it's marked, so you know what it is. I like it. This is uh this is what I wanted, so yay. All right, guys, that's it. That's how you install an override switch for your electric fans. Again, this is something that is a good kind of a backup safety feature so that you are not completely relying on that thermostat switch to do its job. It's been fine, it's been working, and you know, I haven't had any problems, but now I have a little bit more control over my system and that's what, what I was looking for. So, all right guys, that's it. Uh, I think this is something you guys can do. Again, you don't have to have a Mustang to do this. I mean, setting up electric fans, you're probably on a relay already and you're likely to have that set up so that the, the thermostat switch, much like I have here, is your trigger to turn the relay on. So this way you can just interrupt that signal. Now you're in control of it. Doesn't matter what car you have. You know, this is something that should work for everybody. So, all right guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.